run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. The big weights under the lights of the Coliseum here at the Alliant Energy Center do not disappoint. Heck of a show put on by the women. The men are coming up next. We are back inside the Rogue Tent here at the Alliant Energy Center. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Coach Mike Bergner. Thanks for being here, Coach. Thank you. And Chase Ingram as well. And we spent, I think, about the last, it seemed like the last hour just marveling over what we just saw. Just Try to put into words your, your overall thoughts from uh, event number eight. I mean, I know that's what I'm here to do, but I'm going to let you know I'm going to do a poor job about doing it. And it was just short of app. It just it, it was amazing. The, the performance from top to bottom. We were waiting to see what would happen between Tia and Amanda, the, the two best lifters coming in on the women's side. Thank you for extending it just mm -hmm. at least another lift so we could see someone take the win. Tia did it in dramatic fashion. She had more in her, definitely. We, had a, we watched a great fight between uh, Tia and Amanda. And Coach, just, we're going to show some video of the two of them lifting. And I'd just love to get your thoughts on, on what you see here and you know, what, they're, what they're both doing so well. They're starting with Amanda Barnard, and, and this is early on before the weights got super heavy. Uh, Amanda's got great leg drive. Look at that bar coming up. Her timing is impeccable going underneath the bar. And this is well within her wheelhouse. Uh, and, and she's quick, she's explosive. She pulls herself under the bar got a great racking position. On that one, if you notice, I don't like the fact that her grip is so narrow. It's longer and harder for her to get the elbows coming around in a very fast and efficient manner. To me, that's the only reason she missed that. I would tell her to widen her grip at least one thumb length. She'd get the elbows around in a much faster fashion. She'd come right out of that. She's good for much, much more, I'll, I'll guarantee And it. she and Tia Toomey look just about the same throughout the entire event. Let's take a look at, at Tia Toomey again. Just, I'd love to get your thoughts on sure. you know, what you see here from her as she went on to win this event. Yeah, one of the things that I talk a lot about is speed through the middle. On both of those athletes, watch the speed right through the middle there, how that bar almost becomes weightless, and they pull themselves right into that front squat position. And Tia just meets it so beautifully and strong and fast with the wider grip. And she's just, the idea is create speed, acceleration, on the barbell and she goes down and meets the bar in the hole. And you gotta love the celebration from Tia Toomey who wins her second straight event. Thanks for that insight, Coach. That was outstanding. The, the men are up next, so let's get you set for that. Here is where we stand now after seven events heading into the clean. Noah Olsen is still your overall leader, but Matt Fraser managed to slice a little bit of that lead away. He now trails Olsen by 55 points. Jorgen Gumanson sits in third, but he's trying to hold off Scott Panchik for that final spot on the podium. So event eight for the men is just what we saw here for the women. We're gonna start at 315. Ooh. We're gonna go all the way up to 385. The tie break weight is 295. <laughs> Coach, if you were talking to these athletes backstage as they get ready, what's the advice you're giving? Don't change anything. I mean, it's too late to change anything right now. You guys have prepared. The coach has done a great job with you, making sure that everything's the same. And you just continue on. Just do what you know how to do. Don't try to change the daggum thing right now. It's too late anyway. Right? <laughs> you look at the names in that top 10, Chase, and we may have a similar situation play out with the men that we just saw with the women. I, and it could be Scott Panchik and Matt Fraser. You, we, it, those two definitely, but there's a lot more on that list that may be with him. But Matt Fraser to start off with, you're going to take the three-time fittest man on earth. And you're going to take a guy who has had an extensive and successful weightlifting background for about 15 years. And there is nothing you want to see more than a capable, confident, and now furious Frazier to step onto that platform. The second athlete alongside him is one that we maybe not talk about a lot in terms of the weightlifting side, and that is Scott Panchik. Scott Panchik is a strong, 
powerful athlete. And he's going to be up there right with the best of them. He wins these speed clean ladders. He's good at the clean and jerks. At the Rogue Invitational, he won the speed clean right. ladder at the end. So Scott Pancheck is kind of one of those that flies under the radar, I think, in the speed department. We know he's a consistent CrossFit athlete. He's fast. but. Scott has a lot of power behind him as well. So look for those two to definitely be in the top trying to finish out that ladder. And, and Coach Scott Panchik has such a great power clean. Is that, well, what kind of advantage is that in an event like this? Well, I always say that, a, you know, a clean is a missed power clean. Every pool is exactly <laughs> the same, right? And so the whole idea is that if I can power clean everything, that's great. Mm -hmm. But when the weight gets heavy, I still have the same pull. I still have the same lay drive. I just go down and meet the bar wherever it is. So you're going to watch these guys power clean good weights, but they're going to the bar. There's no, there's no inefficiencies there. They go to the bar, they meet the bar, then they write it down and get back up again. Event 8 is going to be a blast. If it's anything like we just saw uh, with the women, and the men are getting set to take the floor, and when they do, we will join the, uh, the CrossFit World Feed and bring you all the action from that. Uh, but this is a big event, like you said, Chase, uh, not only for Matt Fraser, but, but also for Noah Olson, because yes. this is another time where you if he gets caught up in the race here, you, maybe he makes a mistake that costs him more than he may have originally suffered had he stuck to the plan. Especially with the point system that they're working with. You're talking about 10 point losses per place finish that you fall behind. But Noah is very capable in the clean, in all the lists respectively. And what I like about this for Noah is that He's not really going to, I mean, they're going to sit around a lot, which can get in some athlete's yeah, head, but yeah. the speed of the event, in my opinion, is actually going to be good for Noah, because he's going to be able to sit there. Maybe he has his coach on the side who kind of talk him through it. So for Noah, I don't, I'm not worried about it. I'm actually excited to see if he can hang with the big guys in this event. We haven't talked a lot about Jacob Hefner either. What do you expect to see from, from, from him from this yeah, Another, As I said, it's not just Frazier and Scott. You look right. at Hefner, you look at BKG, but Hefner, great finish in the last event. Mm -hmm. One of those athletes that is completely and fully capable of doing this. I'm not sure if his top end strength is enough to hang up there in the top five. I don't think he's in danger of maybe losing that fifth place position in this event, but there's still a lot of capable athletes in this field. Yes, and the overall standings can shift dramatically depending on what happens in this event. The eighth event for the men, it is the clean inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center and this crowd, hopefully they have a lot left in the tank to cheer these men through this event. Noah Olson, your overall leader, 589 points. He's 55 points up on Matt Fraser and 91 points up on Jorgen Carl Gubitz and Scott Panchik trying to punch into the top three and he can do that in this event if he finishes ahead of Jorgen Carl Gubitz and then somebody gets between the two of them. Now, Saxon, Saxon Panchik, Panchik, another athlete capable of lifting well. Yeah, he, just, he won the sprint earlier. That's what got him here in the top 10. But Saxon has a listed clean recently of 375 pounds. Well, that'll do. <laughs> that, that'll do, pig. <laughs> that'll do. Uh, can you imagine? I mean, look at the weights that these guys are handling today. When I first came on the CrossFit scene at the very beginning, we didn't have anybody that could do an overhead squat with PVC pipe. Right? And look at these athletes now. Those are some remarkable weights, and especially when you consider all the work they've done before that, they're still handling these weights. Absolutely amazing to me. The, what I remember the most is actually after 2010, Amanda. There was a lot of shade thrown in the direction of the CrossFit athletes in their snatch and their right. technique, and it was rightly so. And at the time, you know, we didn't really understand the difference between the two, but with the infusion of Bergner strength and coaching and technique is we've seen that massive growth and strength gains just from the coaching side of it. Now everybody's become a better coach. They know what the technique is in the snatch, the clean and the jerk, and it's all pretty much the same. If you can understand how to drive your feet against the ground to create good acceleration on the barbell and then get yourself underneath it, and then make myself strong so that I can receive that weight in a very efficient manner without it crashing on me, everybody's going to get better. And that's what these guys are doing. See the look on Matt Fraser's face as he took the floor? That guy is all business right now. Here comes Noah Olson still hanging on to that white overall leader's jersey that he took from Matt Fraser after his first career event win in Mary, and that was last night under these lights at the Alliant Energy Center inside the Coliseum. 
The men start with 315. We go all the way up to 385 unless we need maybe another barbell or two. The tie break weight moves up to 295 pounds. How would you like to see a 400 pound clean today? Oh, uh, well, I wouldn't uh, see a 400 pound clean. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't do it if you're asking me personally, but I would love to see that from these athletes. Oh, I, I think it's, it, I would love to see that happen. That, 400 the, pounds. The roof on this building yeah, might come off if yeah. that happens. Jackson so, Panchik is first up to 315. There it is. And he will hit that. Go in reverse order of the standings, 10th through 1st. And that means Adrian Moonbiller will be up Please next. Please welcome Adrian Moonbiller. So what, if there's any situation better set up for something like that lift, this is it. 315 for Moonbiller. There it is. And that will count. Two for two so far here on the opening barbell. Now, Will Morad, first time he's been to the CrossFit Games since 2014, and here he is in the final 10. Best finish was fifth in the sprint. Worst finish, 46th in second cut. Okay. So, I thought I saw this after the sprint. And I, I think on that final sprint, Morad might have tweaked something towards the end there. I mean, if you this is not a bar that he's going to miss. I mean, right. he can almost snatch 300 pounds. So I, this is definitely a. There's an issue with Will Morad physically where he won't attempt the lift. That's smart move too. So Morad going over to Dave Castro. So Morad's automatically going to take 10th in the event. We're down to nine lifters. So Morad and Castro talking something over. He's got a Morad hamstring. Morad kind of grabbing hamstring. his left hamstring. Here comes Matt McLeod. First appearance at the CrossFit Games. Here we go. And that'll go for the Australian. Uh, I think we noticed this a little bit on the women's side earlier. Is that that first lift you, you've been sitting in the back for a while. You've been waiting in the athlete staging area. You've been standing and watching it. Even if this is a relatively light lift for a lot of these athletes, they can have some trouble with it mm -hmm. being the first one. Yeah, yeah. We like to have our athletes rest two, two and a half, three minutes, maybe max. And that's uh, if you're resting a lot longer than that and you're not used to that, then it could it could play havoc with you. 315 for James Newberry, and he will hit that. Now Jacob Hepner. Good to see him back here at the CrossFit Games. He's been absent for a couple of years. And making a triumphant comeback here in 2019. He steps up to the 315 pound bar, his first lift of the event. It's a good and Hepner will stick that. And now Scott Panchik will step up for his first lift. Panchik has been to the games multiple times and has never been able to get himself onto the podium. And that's no problem for Panchik. Great speed through the middle there. Uh, of all the athletes so far, Scott's the only one that's shown me that there's a lot of speed through the middle there. And that was very easy for him. And somewhere I think Bill Grundler's screaming at a television <laughs> because he popped that off his shoulders a little early there. And I know Bill at one year, that was sort of his downfall. So Bill, if you're watching, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, my brother. But they do give him credit for the lift. 
And now here comes Bjorvin Gubinson at 315. Bjorvin Gubinson in third place overall. Like the wide grip here. Look at those elbows come around fast. Well, Gubinson hits that easily. Yep. Very efficient. The wider the grip, the faster the elbows. More leg drive that we have, the narrower grip. I've found that the athlete has a tendency to want to pull the bar up too long instead of driving up with your legs and pulling your body down. And here comes Matt Fraser. Second place, just 55 points back of Noah Olson. I love the way he gets set up just like a weightlifter does. And that is simply achieved for Matt Frazier. <laughs> no problem on 315 pounds. And Noah Olsen, the last man to go. Will Morad, the only man not to hit this opening lift. And now, give it up for Noah Olsen. There's Noah Olsen, who's trying to finish on the podium for the first time in his career. His best finish two years ago. He was one spot out when he finished fourth overall. That's good for Noah Olson. We mentioned before about mistakes costing him in that fourth place finish in 2017. If not for that performance in the 2 2 2 3 intervals, Noah Olson is probably on the podium that year. 100%. Will Morad is going to exit the floor. He'll take 10th. And now we need to find out exactly what is wrong with him as he didn't even try and lift the bar. And we saw him grabbing at his hamstring while he's talking to Dave Castro. I'm not going to assume what the injury may be, but coming off of the sprint event earlier this morning. Here's one more look at Scott Panchik at 315. Very efficient lift, good speed through the middle. Back to Saxon Panchik and up to 325 pounds. Nine lifters remain. That is good for the younger of the two Pantics who were left in this competition. I've actually thought that was a better lift than his first one. So add 10 pounds, and that could be a lot what you were saying, is that they've been sitting a long time, and all of a sudden you have to come out with an easy weight, but you've been sitting. This, that one is a lot better, a lot more efficient than the first one. And, and it's probably not quite the same as just that, that opening lift jitters that yeah, a yeah, lot of yeah. weightlifters kind of come up to. Absolutely right. Adrian Moonweiler is up next. And he will hit that. He will move on to the 335 pound bar. Matt McLeod will now step up as Will Morad would have been next, but he bowed out on the first barbell. So here comes Matt McLeod out of Australia. Cloud will fight his way through that. Still nine lifters remaining on the second barbell, 325 pounds, as another Australian, James Newberry, who has guaranteed himself his best career finish at the CrossFit Games by making it into the final 10. Newberry struggles through that, but does make the lift. James Newberry. Jacob Hepner. Fifth place overall with 454 points. 21 points back as Scott Panchik for fourth. 44 points back of Bjorg McGuinson for third. Hepner will stand that up. Please 
perfect so far here through this 325 pound barbell as we have four lifters remaining and Scott Panchik trying to equal his younger brother here at 325. Nice. Yeah, no problem Very for Scott nice. Panchik. Excellent lift. That'll give way to Bjorgren Carl Gudmundsson, third place, 498 points. Three twenty-five, good for Goomins, and he's trying to get back on the podium for the first time since 2015. That was the same year that he won Murph. Two lifters remain. Matt Fraser. His expression has not changed since he has stepped on the floor. is picture perfect for Matt Fraser. What does he do so well here? <laughs> a lot of good drive, uh, you know, getting the bar up, but the real coaching point here is that he slides his feet out, and while he's sliding his feet out, he's pulling on the bar, and that really shoots him underneath the bar in a very quick and efficient manner. Just outstanding. Those guys still got to continue to pull after the acceleration's been made to get him underneath the bar. Outstanding job. There's Noah Olson now. At 325. Olsen will hit that. Maybe bop him a little bit forward, but not enough to throw him off. So we go nine for nine. Nine lifters remain. As we move now to 335 pounds. And you know, you contrast the expressions of Noah Olsen and Matt Fraser right now. They could not be more different. <laughs> <laughs> They're also two completely different human that beings. That is a good I, point. I mean, you know, Matt's all business and Noah is in his own way. Um, I do like to see the brevity with Noah coming in, especially in the situation that he's in. When, you, when you're looking at, you probably got four or five guys that have ability to, you're going to get close to the same weights towards the top, Noah being one of them. But with those, he might be the later of that group. You know, I can see Scott, Matt, Saxon all probably lifting better than what Noah's probably capable of. And when you're talking about that, that's a 30 or 40 point loss if he can't hang on to somewhere close to the top three if Matt is going to go on the tear like we think he is. Saxon Panchik, who last year finished 19th overall at the CrossFit Games, this will be his best career finish by virtue of the fact that he's in the final 10 athletes. And here comes Adrian Moonweiler. I think we're going to see a couple guys at this weight really start to struggle. They, weight's going to get a real. 335. 335. The man from Switzerland, the Swiss national champion out of the open. And he'll hit that. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm impressed with him. His first lift didn't look that good to me, but the last two lifts have been very efficient. Looks really good. Look, big and strong and fast. Here comes Matt McLeod. I think McLeod on that last one, he went pretty wide with his feet. I think he's got, to me, it looked like he might have something done a uh, little bit wrong with his left knee, too. It looked, looked like he was favoring it just a little bit. 335 for one of those two Australians here in the top 10, Matt McLeod, and he gets pinned and won't be able to stand that up, but he has time to make one more run. Cloud won't be able to hit it, and, and he will bow out. And I'll promise you, he doesn't front squat like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're now down to eight. James Newberry. James Newberry. 
The other Australian here in the top 10 will step up to 300. 35 pounds. 25 wasn't the easiest lift for him. It, it, it didn't seem he lost any bad position. It just the weight starting to creep up on him. Ladies and gentlemen, 335. Oh, actually. Yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Newberry will better, stick right? that lift. I thought yeah. he got a, a little maybe into the toes a bit, but he recovered much better than he did on the very, last one. Very nice. Yep. Don't like his narrowness of the grip, but you know we'll see what happens as it gets heavier. But that, that was a much better lift than the last one. Sean, I don't know about you. When I go home, I'm narrow, or I'm widening the grip, and I'm never catching in a squat clean <laughs> again because I don't want to <laughs> fail my power clean. Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> am. Oh god. Yeah, just meet the bar. And Jacob Hepner making his first career appearance or first appearance at the cross again since 2016 when he finished seventh. That was his career best finish, and he will hit. 235 pounds. He went to the games three straight years, 14, 15, and 16, and hasn't been back since. I really like Hepner's pull. He's got a lot of good acceleration through the middle. Leg strength looks like it might be off a little bit, so we'll see if that comes back and gets him or not. I think some of the footwork and yes. some people go out, it seems like he almost kicks his heels in. Yeah, that, it really, I mean, 90% of all missed lifts are because of the feet somehow, right? Here's Scott Panchik at 335. That looks really solid. Yeah, that was easy. Oh. And once again, popping it off the shoulders, oh. maybe a tad bit uh. early, but they were going to give him credit for the lift. Scott Panchik, we mentioned his consistency. From 2012 to 2017, he was at the games every year. He finished fourth twice, fifth once, sixth three times. His worst career finish came last year when he finished 18th, as Bjorgman Carl Gumanson is back to the bar. Eight lifters remain. This is the third barbell, 335 pounds. Here we go, 335, Carl Goodmanson. And, and Goodmanson will make that. Good solid lift. Two lifters remain, and Matt Fraser will be up next. Thank you. Thanks for that. Three thirty-five for Matt Fraser. Twelve career event wins here at the CrossFit Games. Oh, yeah. Jesus! And he has plenty left of the tank. Do you see that speed through the middle there? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like it's it's effortless. The the weightlessness on the bar because of the leg drive. Everything's leg drive. That was awesome. I mean, and for people who might be a little bit new to this. Obviously, you have to have strength, but right. you got to have good technique. Yeah, you got to. You got to have the. You always have good technique. It's called mobility, speed, and strength in that order. And once I have the mobility, and then I work on the strength, mm -hmm. and that technique is going to be there. You got to have the good technique first. So now Noah Olson, the final lifter at 335. Okay. Olson will hit that. I like that one better than the last one. Oh, yeah. So eight lifters remain, and we go to 345 pounds. As Matt McLeod and Will Morad are the only two men who have bowed out. Morad's going to finish 10th, and McLeod will finish 9th. Here's one more look at Jacob Hepner at 335. It's a good lift, but he just didn't have the acceleration and the speed through the middle of that lift. It's a nicely done, but still. Saxon Panchik will get us started here in Thank you. the fourth round, 345 pounds on the bar, eight men left. And that is easy. I think he's getting better and better. Jeez, I mean, I'm, that's that's amazing. It's a beautiful lift. Just 23 years old. Adrian Montmeyer. Thanks for being with us here on the Rogue Iron Game, everybody. We hope you are enjoying the coverage that we are watching provided by the CrossFit World Feed. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram and Coach Mike Bergener, kind enough to spend the afternoon with us talking about some weightlifting. Three forty-five for Moonbiler, okay. and he will hit that. 
bad. I, didn't, I don't think he got below parallel on that. No, one. I was going <laughs> to say that was actually probably his best effort right there. He really received that bar very high. Here comes James Newberry. Newberry trying to bounce his way up, oh, wow. and he will win that. So Newberry gets in a fight with a barbell when he <laughs> takes that round, and he'll stay alive. And a little look of relief as he walks back in the chairs. <laughs> and once again, we are in the rogue tent calling this event. This place is packed, and I think maybe three people are actually shopping. Everyone else is watching the big screen that they have here. So it's always fun to feed off the crowd. We it have is, one yeah, here. We got our own crowd in the in the, the rogue tent. Here's Jacob Hepner at 3:45. Hepner won't oh. be able to make it. He has time for another run, but I don't know if he has enough left in the tank. The crowd is trying to will him back to that barbell. Nope. Not going to happen for Jacob Hepner. And we're now down to seven. So Hepner, if everyone else succeeds, he's going to take eighth in the event. <laughs> Hepner letting the crowd know that, no, I'm done. That's all I had. You want me to lift what, five times? Yeah. <laughs> two, two, no. No. I'll take it. Oh, thank you. And now, the elder Panchik, Scott Panchik at 345. And oh he will God. hit that. It's getting better. Absolutely outstanding. He's on a mission as well. Gumanson, Fraser, and Olsen. The last three lifters here at 345 before we move to 355 pounds. There we go. And Gumanson calling for a little crowd support. Three forty-five for Bjorman Carl Gumanson. Oh, I don't know nice. if we needed the crowd on that one. You, you, you got to save those. You got to save those waves. <laughs> you, hit, you hit the nos a little early. <laughs> Two lifters remain as Matt Fraser comes up to three forty-five. And there was an audible murmur that just passed through the crowd here inside the rogue tent as he stepped up to the to the barbell. I feel bad for that platform if he wins this event. <laughs> Let's see how durable that thing is. 345 for Fraser. Easy day for Matt Fraser. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's a little bit of a stare as he exits oh, the platform. Yeah. So Matt Fraser trying to send a message here yeah. and win his second straight event. And he is pumped up as he comes back to Jordan Carl Gubitz. A little fist bump from Scott Panchik. And Noah Olsen still all smiles. Noah's on a mission. So 345 on the barbell. For your overall leader, he leads Matt Fraser by 55 points. We're down to seven lifters. Madison, Wisconsin, Noah Olsen, looking to get 345. Let's go! Olsen will hit that, and we move to 355 pounds. Seven lifters remain. Jacob Hepner. The only we'll take eight. danger I can see for Noah is that he's fast under the bar, but it seems he might start and try to get too under too quick and yep. not finishing yeah, that he's extension. Not finishing. And he's more of a hip bumper anyway instead of a hip driver. Mm -hmm. So that could that could come back and haunt him. Here's one more look at James Newberry, who really struggled with this, but right. was able to stand it up. Right, 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 right. I mean, just that's just sure guts and will. That's all it is. I mean, he's just the weight's getting a little bit too heavy. He's got a really narrow grip there, as well. Panchik. Saxon Panchik. And now we're onto the fifth barbell, 355 pounds. 355. Panchik will stand that up easily. 
Now, Saxon Panzig, he has a second place finish at the CrossFit Games last year. That was in, in chaos. That's his best finish of his career coming into this year. And he finished 19th overall Welcome in 2018. Adrian Here comes Adrian Muweiler, who has never finished inside the top 10 of the CrossFit Games, and that is going to change here. He was 34th in 2016. And then last year, 2018, finished 16th. 3.55 for the Swiss national champion. Oh, man. And he will hit wow. that. I mean, that's like halfway through coming off the floor. I don't think it's there. But right. when he gets it to his hips. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not a real big uh, fan of the, the old, you know, drive the hips forward a little bit. But, boy, he hits that bar and pulls himself right into good position. Excellent lift. Here comes James Newberry, who struggled with 345. Now 10 more pounds, 355, his first attempt. Uh, Newberry doesn't seem like he has enough in the tank. The crowd doesn't want him to quit. Newberry's going to make one more run at 355. <laughs> and he just doesn't have anything left in the tank. It's a great effort from James Newberry. This certainly was not a wheelhouse event for him. No, but it, uh, I mean, that's a great finish. Absolutely. I mean, it's not a wheelhouse. So he's going to take seventh in the event as we are now down to six lifters. That's unless no one else bows out here. Scott Panchik now at 355. Oh, man. And that is smooth for Scott Strong. Panchik. Strong and fast. Very efficient. Bjorkman, Carl Three lifters remain. Bjorgen Carl Gumanson, Matt Fraser, and Noah Olson. Gumanson going to the crowd again here. I don't know. And again, I don't, on the last lift, he didn't need it. I would have had the crowd going at 215. <laughs> All right? So what, who am I to say? <laughs> hey, if they're there, you may as well use them. 355 for Gumanson. Yep, oh. Come on. And Gumanson wow. stands that up, and he will live to fight another day. I'll tell you what, to get that buried in the squat that far back and the stand up the way he did. He's got some strong legs under that bar. That guy is strong. Here comes Matt Fraser. 355 on the barbell. Fraser in second place overall. 55 points back of Noah Olson. And that goes up quickly. <laughs> Matt Fraser said he's going to try and win them all, and he keeps that up. He might get a second straight victory here at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. Now here comes Noah Olson, yeah. final lifter at 355. That was Matt Fraser, the weightlifter right there. No question about that. 355 pounds for the overall leader, Noah Olson. This is going to be a big one for Noah. And Olson will hit that. And here's where I think the pressure starts to build a little bit. Right? You're, you're Noah Olson, you're looking at the number of guys left. And that number changes your finishing place if Matt were to win this event and you were to get last in the next wave. So some, when you're doing the math in your head, that starts to add a little bit to that pressure. Now it's good for Noah that he's going at the end of the, the round. But it starts to build up. It's not just about the weight going up. Well, with six men remaining, as we take a look at Saxon Panchik, if Noah Olson were to finish six, he'd earn 50 points. If Frazier were to win, he'd get 100, and he'd gain 50 points. Olson would still have a five-point lead. Wow. So Olson has basically guaranteed himself that he is going to have the white overall leader's jersey heading in tomorrow. Now the question is, though, by how much? Saxon Panchik steps up to 365. Come on. And Saxon still fighting it. Won't be able to hit it, but he still has a little more time. But 
as we've seen, the second attempts usually don't go well because those first attempts take so much. Let's see how he does with a screaming crowd at the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center behind him, panting underneath it, but won't be able to hit the lift. And he will... There comes that time where it's just too heavy. It was just a month ago, he actually hit 370 as a PR. So you're talking really? about 365, 99.1%. I mean, after all those lifts. All the, after all the other stuff he's yeah. done. We're so. down to five in Saxon Panchik right now. If no one else bows out, would finish six overall. All right, Adrian Moonviler, 365. Wow. And he Jesus. will make that. <laughs> See, strong. Man. Wow. Like, strong. <laughs> I mean, that's strength overcoming technique there. Almost. Oh, God. It, it is strong. It was ugly, but it was strong. He's <laughs> like a little pit bull. Like you said, when you hit 365, you just say, yeah, that's a good lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Scott Panchik up next. Here we go. No, We're down to five no, lifters as Scott's younger brother Saxon failed at this weight. First attempt for Scott Panchik at 365. Oh, excellent. Yes. And that goes up fast. Beautiful, beautiful lift. Panchik moves on. Good job. Jorgen Carl Gumanson set to come out next. He is the Icelandic national champion. He finished second overall in the world wide open behind Matt Fraser. Gumanson coming in in third place overall. 36 points back of Matt Fraser for second place. 365 for Gumanson. And on, Jordan on, is on, fighting on, it and he will stand it up. And the Icelandic contingency in the crowd loves that as Gumanson is going to make it to the next round. Two lifters remain, Matt Fraser and Noah Olsen. We have five remaining in the competition. count for Matt Fraser. Okay, Matt's going to become a weightlifter now again. <laughs> if Bjorgen Carl Goodmanson doesn't ask for the skull clap <laughs> before his final bar, <laughs> we will have missed a grand opportunity. That is all I'm going to say. That would have been a lot of fun to see, but maybe we will see it. Here comes Noah Olsen now at 365, final lifter to go at this weight. Just three barbells remaining. Planned barbells remaining, I should say, after this. 365 for your overall leader. Olsen fighting it, and he won't hit it. Now keep in mind, if he bows out here, he's got to do a tiebreaker with Saxon Panchik. He will still have the overall lead. But Matt Fraser now has the opportunity to cut into that significantly heading into the final day. So Olsen's going to call it quits. And now we're going to have a tiebreaker between Olsen and Saxon Pantic. So it's either sixth place or fifth place for Noah Olsen as four men remain. The worst Olsen can do is sixth, and that would be 50 points. And he leads Matt Fraser by 55. Here's one more look at Bjorn Gumanson. Oh, God, I love the way he moves his feet here. <laughs> Gumanson into the final four along with Scott Panchik, Adrian Moonviler, and Matt Fraser. But first, a tie break to take care of between Saxon Panchik and Noah Olson. What's the tiebreaker, 295? It's 295, five reps for time. 
Those are the four men who remain as we move to 375. But first we have the tie break between Noah Olsen and Saxon Panchik. The Saxon has had a lot more rest than Noah Olsen has right now. The winner of the tie break will finish fifth in the event. And that'll be good for 60 points. It's going to be Noah Olsen versus Saxon Panchik here on the tie break. Fifth place on the line. 60 points for fifth, 50 points for sixth. First to five reps at 295. Olsen hits his first, Panchik hits his first, both right back on the barbell. Jeez. Olsen choosing to power clean that, both through two. Panchik hits three, Olsen will power clean three. Saxon's faster on the squat. That's four for Panchik, four for Olsen, one rep remains. It's gonna come down to the sprint to the finish line. Oh. Both have the barbell oh. down, here we go! Oh. It's Olsen oh, by oh, three oh, one hundredths oh, of a second. God. Wow. Keep that in mind tomorrow because that means that Matt Fraser won't be as close as five points. Those points are going to be huge, maybe, for Noah Olsen. Three one hundredths of a second. Holy cow, was that amazing? Oh, How many wow. times have we seen things come down on the final day in the final event to five reps or less, or five points or less? Oh, God. And Sean, you're right. This could be huge for Noah. So Olsen's going to finish fifth. That gives him 60 points. You know what the difference was there? Panchik slid way up higher. And no one went right at the line. So a weightlifting event comes down to a baseball slide. <laughs> oh, Noah Olson, what that means is, with the fifth place finish, he earns 60 points. So the most Fraser can pick up on him is 40. Fraser trails him by 55 right now. That's the difference between a 15-point lead going into the final day and just a five-point lead going into the final day. So now, we are up to 300. 70 pounds, Adrian Moonweiler, four men remain. Oh, this is fun. I love this stuff. Put your hands together, Adrian. Oh, oh, yeah. And just won't be able to uh, complete that lift, so Moonweiler is going to take fourth place, assuming Panchik, Gumitson, and Fraser hit this lift. We are now down to three. Here comes Scott Panchik, and now it's all business for him. First attempt for Scott Panchik, 370 pounds. Yep. Yes, yes. Panchik will stand it up, and he stays alive. I don't know it's louder. The Coliseum or this place right now. I mean, it's <laughs> nice to have these people here. It helps you feed off I know, the I energy. Like I mean, I it's missing out. I wish people could see this. It is literally like a sports bar in here right now. No one is looking at any of the stuff that Rogue has for sale. They're all just sitting down watching the giant screen. And, and fans around the, the campus here are just trying to find a way to watch this thing. And we're glad that these, these fans are here right now. Now Gooman's in at 370. Ooh. And that doesn't look like it's going to go for Gumanson. So we're going to have another tie break as we're down to the final two. Matt Fraser is going to be the last one to go, but we're going to have a tie break between Moonweiler and Bjorvin Carl Gumanson for third place. Fraser! It's going to be Fraser versus Panchik if Fraser hits this lift. Oh gosh, he looks so angry. 
It's all business. Yes. Stay Fraser at show. 370, and he has the whole crowd behind him. Up, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, Fraser will stand oh, it up. It's going to be Pantic versus Fraser for the win. And there, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked a, not as clean, but it's there's way more in there. I think oh, yeah. he he had it so far back and yeah. almost knocked him backwards. That You're was absolutely right. That wasn't like a strength a thing. Balance. Oh no, no, I don't think so. I think he just received it a little bit back, so he had to regather himself to come out of the hole with it. One more look at Scott Pantic here at 370. So we got 385 nets, right? I think it's 375. Oh, okay, 375. That looks good. That looks good. <laughs> there ever a time I'd love to be inside the Coliseum it's right now. <laughs> Man. Now, first, the tie break between Jorvan Gumitz and Adrian Moonbiler, the winner finishes third and takes 80 points. You know, I thought it was interesting between Noah and Saxon on the last one, is Saxon squat cleaning was just was faster than Noah, but his pickup time was faster on Noah's side, so it was two different styles taking the same amount of time. Here's to see what these guys do. Two ninety-five, five reps for time. The last tie break came down to a slide across the finish line. Ten seconds. Stand by. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's an international. Gumitson will hit his lift, as will Moonviler, and they are dead even after one rep. Second rep good for Moonviler. He's power cleaning this. Moonviler third rep. Gumitson through three. That's four for the Swiss national champion. Four for Gumitson. Moonweiler will hit that, and Adrian Moonweiler is going to take third. Gumitson will finish in fourth. Moonweiler is strong. Very powerful guy. I didn't expect that from him. No. We're down to the final two. Scott Panchik thought Matt Fraser was going in for the handshake. He wanted the chalk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm not shaking your head. Uh, here's Fraser's last lift at 370. I love the fact he's still got a hook grip on that bar. That just means he can pull along the right good. He's got the mobility. He's pulling all the way through that pattern. There is no release of that to become weightless, so to speak. He's actually continuing to pull all the way through. Now we're down to the final two. Scott Panchik up first. 375 on the barbell. If Scott's just got to keep his technique like he had on the last one. Panchik is under it. Panchik will stand it up. And Scott Panchik hits 375. I said for Scott, he's, he's so strong. So he has the legs underneath the bar that he needs. He's got to keep that bar close to him. Now for Fraser, I want to see is that he had a bobble in the last one, but I think it was, it was a more of a technical flaw than a strength flaw. Yep. Now to 375 for Matt Fraser. Go, go. Oh, and yeah. Fraser will hit go. that. There it is. Yeah. There we have it. And this 
heavyweight slugfest <laughs> will continue, and I think that looks says it all. Uh, it's got panting, we're like, really, seriously, we're gonna do some more of this? <laughs> Look at this technique. Look at that bar move. Whoa, wow. I love this feet to the middle. Man, my heart's beating through my chest right now. <laughs> I'm sweating. This is awesome. Usually. I can't remember if I've been watching weightlifting or running a mile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Check that eyeball. Eyeballing you. If, if Scott Panzig were to win this event, it would be his first career event win since 2012 when he took Fran. Wow. 380? Oh, wow. 380 pounds. Man. Panchik and Fraser for the event win. Fraser looking for his fourth victory of the competition and his second straight. It's like 173 kilos or something like that. It's just unbelievable. What's going through these guys' minds right now, Coach? Well, I really like what Panchik's doing. He's just sitting down there. He's not panicking. He's just kind of holding it within. And Fraser's like the gorilla that's staunch, uh, you know, stalking the platform. <laughs> he wants to get up there and lift. you got two different types of getting yourself ready type thing before you lift. I prefer Panchik's mode a little bit better because he's still got to just gather all the energy that he can to put forth on the platform. Scott Pants can overtake Bjorba Gubinson for third place. I have never seen Scott look like that. I, had n I haven't either. This is incredible. 380 pounds, the crowd on its feet for Scott Panchik as he makes his first attempt. No. Oh. And won't be able to get that. He's coming about 10 seconds in. Panchik has a chance to make another try, but the way that... The, last year. Find the, grip and rip. the way that bar, bar went up there, I'm not sure he's got enough in the tank here. The worst he can do is second place. One more try. No, nah, I wouldn't. And do it. just nah, isn't having it. That's a smart move right there. Now he's got to hope that Matt's going to miss it as well. Then there'll be a liftoff, right? He would go to a tiebreaker if Fraser misses this lift. So Matt Fraser for the event win. He wants to walk off. Yeah. 380 for the three-time champ. He hits this, he wins the event. Up, oh, come on, Matt. Oh, yes! Matt Town oh. is still yes. Town. Two straight wins. And strap in, everybody. Sunday is going to be a blast at the CrossFit Games. <laughs> Holy cow, that's Matt Frazier, the weightlifter. Amazing. How do you hit a walk-off home run at the CrossFit Games <laughs> just like that? Exactly. So much speed through the middle there, and he was able to pull himself right into that good front squat position and stand up with it. That was awesome. Fourth win of the competition, but keep this in mind, he will still trail Noah Olsen going into the final day. But man, he crept closer, and this was impressive. Watch this. Look at that bar move. That's what you got to have. You got to have that speed through the middle, right? Speed is everything, and strength, and everything. <laughs> Goodness. That was awesome. Matt Fraser has had some incredible moments here in the Coliseum, and I don't know if that can be topped. Well, I'm really impressed. That's 380 pound clean after all the other stuff they're doing. Outstanding. That just shows you how efficient he is with that clean. It's awesome. Matt Fraser, four wins so far, second straight as he heads into Sunday. This room is fired up. I'm fired up. You are still fired up.
What was going through your mind when you dropped that 380 pound barbell? I did not want to race Scott on some power cleans, so I figured I better make this now. <laughs> you said you were coming out here to win this event, and that's exactly what you did. Moving forward, what is your attitude like toward the rest of the weekend? Oh man, I was nervous about this. Uh, I was putting all my chips on the table. The most I've cleaned in the last year is 345. So thank you guys for getting that hype going. Yes. That was amazing. You're doing exactly what you need to do to close that gap between you and that first place spot. It's a position you haven't been in in a while. I mean, does that affect you? Does that affect your mentality at all? No, not really. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I had a couple shit events and um, just putting all the chips on the table. Let's, let's go. Let's have a good last day. Absolutely. Making moves. Congratulations. Thank you. Matt Fraser is not going to go down without a fight. Noah Olsen is still your overall leader, but Matt Fraser is gaining ground. Olsen finishes fifth. Fraser with another event win, his fourth of the competition. Scott Panchik will take second. Adrian Moonbotter, a surprise third place finish as he outbattles Bjorgman Gubinson in that tie break. Whew. <laughs> I'm going to catch our breath here for a second, yeah. <laughs> what a day. We're going to step aside. Coach B, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate you being here. That was a blast. I hope you had as much fun as oh, we did. We I always love, love having you, you stop by. One day left here. We started with the teams, the Panchik brothers into the top 10. Mayhem Freedom looking good, and Tia Toomey continues her march to history. We're going to step aside for a quick second. We'll be back to wrap everything up here on the Rogue Iron Game, live from the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Stay with us, everybody.